Namaste, beautiful souls. I'm just coming in here to speak to you very impromptu, um, just after I got a really beautiful download from the meditation that I did today. And I guess, you know, when we've been thinking a lot of things and our mind's been in full chatter for a while, um, we've been contemplating things about our life, about ourselves. When we go deep into a meditation, we allow the, the subconscious mind and the truth of those thoughts to sort of come to the surface and to reveal a few things to us. And it doesn't always happen straight away. So I know sometimes we go to get that, to get that answer. And sometimes it just takes a little time. It takes a few more days of meditation or even a few more weeks before we can really clear the mind and get that clarity. Um, and that's what was happening to me. I was asking for answers and I wasn't getting those answers straight away. And I was getting really, really frustrated. And I guess what, what came through to me today is to be able to truly step into your higher self and to, to serve in a way that really honors your dharmic path and to be on purpose means that you need to accept and embrace all aspects of yourself and all parts of who you are. So we are human beings having a very real experience in this world. And we're also spiritual beings, the essence of who we are. And sometimes it can be a little confusing as to what role we're really playing. And if we go deep into those sort of spiritual realms of who we are, we have an image and a picture of what that should look like. And if you are in the line of work that taps into that deeper spirituality or um, healing or anything like that, sometimes it feels as if our, our human self, you know, takes over. And I think for me in recent years, especially around the whole COVID situation, I saw a lot of my spiritual community stay and do a lot of things that were not in alignment with spirituality and it started to taint my view of what spirituality is and I started to actually be very judgmental towards what spirituality was and again that in itself is not spiritual at all but I started to sort of shut that part of me off because I didn't want to be associated with the the people that were um, saying and doing these really awful things and being really nasty and doing it all under the umbrella of spirituality, which it absolutely wasn't, but I didn't want to be classed under that umbrella. And so I shut that part of me off for, you know, probably a couple of years and things in my life really started to become out of alignment I started to feel really disconnected to myself and that was really challenging. And this is why I was asking for the answers, like what's going on here? Like I didn't feel like myself and it was really hard to come to terms with because I help people through Ayurveda, through holistic health, connect deeper into their self and to understand their self and to tap into that wisdom of how their womanly body works and I take the teachings from a very spiritual Ayurvedic place and holistic health and natural evidence-based science and interweave that with the understanding I have of our, you know, more allopathic medical-based science and logic. And I really love the blend of these two. But... I was starting to feel disconnected to my spiritual self and it was creating it was creating disharmony in my life in my mind and in my body. And then I started to think I really need to find that deeper connection again. And so I started to get back into my spiritual practices that I had sort of just let go. And with that came so many realizations. And one of those realizations was a lot of the struggle was not only me losing connection with my spiritual self, but me also hiding my humanness. 
because we start to you know, if we start to work in these holistic fields that encompass the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, we start to think that our humanness, there's something wrong with our humanness and also wanting to have a materialistic life. But the truth is when we can embody both of these aspects of ourself, this is when we can actually step into our higher self. So whilst I felt disconnected to the true essence of who I am, I also started trying to disconnect myself from wanting a great life, wanting more, wanting, you know, the luxuries of that our modern world can give us. And I started to feel really bad for that. Like, you know, you should, you should want nothing. You should just be very content, live in Santosha with nothing if you're really walking this spiritual path. And what I realized in these last few weeks of going deep into my meditation is that is not true. Neither of it is true because we are both spiritual beings and human beings and we are here. We have chosen to be incarnated in this very time, in this space, to experience both, to be both. And when I, you know, stood back and really looked at the Ayurvedic teachings of this, I was like, hang on, you know, what have I missed here? I teach this. I teach this in my Ayurveda Alchemist program, the four goals of life. And those four goals of life include karma, which is pleasure, and atha, which is prosperity. And that prosperity can come from materialistic things. It can be enjoying, you know, your Louis Vuitton designer handbags. It can be enjoying staying at luxury resorts. Because when we can allow ourselves to embrace our experience of being a human on this earth, we actually up-level our vibration. Because what happens you know, what happens when I get to go to a beautiful resort and, and sit there and, and eat fine, beautiful food and feel really alive in that moment? I'm having fun. I am experiencing this life, this blessed, beautiful life in human form that I have been gifted. And when I do that, I have fun. I step into that higher self, that higher version of me as a human being with this spiritual essence. And so when I do that, when I get to have fun, when I get to play with all the realms of what it means to be human, whether that is being of deep, deep service to people, helping people heal through Ayurveda, through allopathic medicine, through science, helping people understand their womanly body and how it functions and how their hormones can really be imbalanced and how we can get them to a more balanced state how PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, can affect our emotional and our spiritual state, how we can bring ourselves back into alignment. So I can, in my human vessel that I have, I can help serve people with this deeper purpose that is being fed by my spiritual being. But this human vessel is also here to experience all of the senses and to have fun. And that might be, I was going to say getting all dressed up, but you know what, I actually don't love getting dressed up, but you know, dressed up for me and going to a beautiful place and fine dining and, you know, splashing in the beautiful pool of the luxury resort and then going bushwalking and trekking up a mountain and then diving into beautiful water holes with waterfalls falling down, experiencing everything I get to experience as a human in this lifetime. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that is one of the four goals of life. That is us, that is building our prosperous, abundant human life. And then the other fourth goal of the other, the third goal out of the four goals of life is Dharma, walking your Dharmic path. And that just simply means to be in service as your higher self. And often we look for that higher purpose. And yes, we do have a higher purpose of being here. We weren't just accidentally born into this world at this very time. We do have that higher purpose. And it takes understanding that higher intellect, 
and being able to connect with who we truly are, that deeper essence of us or our spiritual being, and then cultivating and using our humanness, our human being to actively, to actively give and to actively be part of our dharmic path. And so when we really start to understand all of these concepts, we can easily start to realize when we are out of alignment with all aspects of ourselves, And that was what was happening to me. I felt very much out of alignment. I was questioning my dharmic path because I had disconnected from my spiritual self. And I had also denied the other, the prosperity and the materialism I can create as a human being in this world. So I was denying so many aspects of myself that I wasn't able to show up on my dharmic path with true integrity. And that was really disturbing. And that was really upsetting me. And I was feeling really, really down and distorted. And that's what happens with our ahamkara, our ego mind, that sense of I. It can get distorted if we haven't got all of those other elements in place so we can step into our higher self. Our ahamkara, our ego, is important, is absolutely important in this human form because it helps us deliver our dharma. And it helps us know right from wrong and it helps us to discern. But it can get distorted when the other elements of self are not in alignment. And then the fourth goal of life is moksha, liberation. Is that pure freedom and sense of self, that connectedness to self and the divinity, knowing that even our spiritual essence, our spiritual being and form, our human being, our human form are not separate from each other. They are all one. We as a human race are all as one as part of this cosmic evolution. And from the Ayurvedic perspective, we are all part of one big consciousness, Parusha. One big consciousness is the energy of Parusha. And it was when the physical manifest of Prakriti and pa Parusha collide is when our humanness was born. It's the whole big evolution that we are part of, that we are not separate from. But when we start to individualize these aspects of ourselves, and deny parts of ourselves. We deny who we truly are. And it is really hard to step into our higher selves and to understand why we are here. What is that deeper, higher purpose? Who are we here to serve beyond our own being and our own experience? So what really came through to me in my meditation is that all of me is blessed and beautiful and I shouldn't deny my spiritual being. And it was my ahamkara, my ego, that was really starting to distort what spirituality really is and really means to me because I was attaching it to what other quote-unquote spiritual beings were saying, were doing, and ethically, I didn't agree with that. I didn't feel that they were integrity in, in integrity. And therefore, I attached spiritualism to that. And that was wrong. That was wrong of me. And through that process, I disconnected to my true essence, my spiritual self. And then I let myself feel ashamed for wanting prosperity, for wanting a beautiful life and to wanting this human ex existence to be all that it can and to have fun. But fun is joy. Joy is happiness. And that is our birthright. And that is our true essence speaking through our spiritual form. And this is why I feel that as a health practitioner or a health coach, health professional of any sort, it is really 
important to have that deeper understanding of ourselves, to have that that grounding of ourselves, but also to really understand the realm of what true holistic health is. And that is that is what I do in my higher self methodology. And so that you can step into your higher self. So whether you are a woman coming to me because you're suffering from premenstrual dysphoric disorder and you have the bloated belly all the time, you getting the migraines, but you're having emotional dysregulation, you're snapping at your family, even though you know you love them and you shouldn't, you're having thoughts that are making you sad, making you dis disillusioned, making you feel depressed or anxious, or whether you're a woman going through peri perimenopause and hormonal imbalances, or whether you are a woman experiencing endometriosis and PCOS, I take you through the higher self methodology because you cannot dissociate parts of you. All of you create your health and your well being. So, yes, whilst I bring in the science and the allopathic um, understanding of medicine and how the body works, I also bring in the true natural health evidence of Ayurvedic science, which includes our physical body. It includes the higher realm of creation and the doshas within us that become imbalanced. The doshas are our energetic states of our mind and our body. It also includes our spiritual self, our emotional self and our mental self. And even for my students who I guide through the Ayurveda Alchemist program or my business and clinical mentorship clients, I still use this methodology because it is so holistic. And the first one is to optimize your holistic health through an integrative approach. And like I realized through my med meditation, the integration of things is what makes us whole. So it is so important to do it through an integrative approach. And then the second pillar I use is empowering belief shifts through Ayurvedic psychology. And that is the understanding of how the mind and the higher intellect works, the mahad, the higher intellect source, and being able to dissociate the thoughts in our lower mind, the ones that we've created a story and a fear-based reaction to, and that can be a physical reaction into our body because we can never heal from a disempowered state. So we need to step into a more empowered state and understand how we can do that with our mind and shifting our belief patterns, how we can allow the subconscious to help us truly heal or truly create success in our life or our business or whatever that might be for us. And then my third pillar is dharmic impact. How can we create more impact in our life and all the lives of others by deeply connecting to ourself and to our purpose. And often that purpose piece is one of the things missing. And this can be for my health clients or for my business clients or for my students, understanding our dharmic path and how that will affect the impact that we're creating in our life. It also means how can we activate purpose-driven changes in our lives to create the results we want? So whether that is healing our hormones, what are those purpose-driven changes we can implement in our life to create greater impact on our healing journey? And tapping into that deeper connection and deeper sense of self, because that is the ultimate purpose of our spiritual being, our human being, and then using all of that beauty to step into your higher self so that you can live your best life, the life that you are meant to live, so that you can experience the pleasure, the karma, we call it in Ayurveda, the pleasure of the senses, experience prosperity, and even the materialism that we have created on this earth, the Arthur in Ayurveda. Stepping into our true dharmic path of service, 
that deeper purpose. And of course, when we get all of these in alignment, we can start to elevate our liberation, moksha. So I hope that this, this was helpful for you. I know that I have been sitting with these thoughts for a while and asking for these answers to come in. And maybe I haven't articulated them as clearly as they came in my mind, but sometimes it's really hard to translate the downloads that you're getting. I, I can sense them in my body and I can vision them and feel them, but then being able to explain them to others can sometimes be a little difficult. But I guess the biggest takeaway is that to really step into your higher self, to be the highest version of yourself, you need to accept and experience and amalgamate all of the aspects of you. You need to have that really deep connection to your spiritual self and to your human being and bring them together because they are not separate. They are all part of Purusha, manifest into Prakriti. So a higher, deeper consciousness manifest into this physical being. And you are here for a higher purpose. You are here to live that life that you know you are meant for and to be the person, the human <laughs> and the spiritual being with that gift on their dharmic path. So thank you so much for listening to my, my Ayurvedic intuitive download that I got today. And if you are interested in learning more about Ayurveda and how it can really help you elevate your life and help you elevate your business by being able to get your clients more holistic results and following a system that I have really curated over many, many years. I've been in the health and wellness industry for over 17 years, and this is 2023, so maybe 18 years. And I have seen the limitations of both Eastern and Western medicine. I have seen and treated and helped thousands of women on my path. And I have curated this wonderful methodology, the higher self methodology that really helps you elevate your your life, your health, your business, so that you can step into your higher self. And it will also help you get those greater transformations for your clients. And you learn this through the Ayurveda Alchemist system, which is a framework in its own right. And then we help to bring all of your Dharmic imprints so all of your past experiences in this lifetime and maybe even in the past lifetimes, if you believe in that, but all of your experiences, no matter who you are and where you are in life, these are, this is part of the Dhammic impact pillar where we take all of those experiences and we curate your own system, your own method that helps you build authentic authority and high level status and credibility as a health and wellness practitioner. So you can deeply know that you can go out and serve and you can help others on your dharmic path and that you can truly fulfill the four goals of life. So if this is something that is resonating with you, please reach out and I would love to yeah, I would really love to guide you on your path to becoming an Ayurveda holistic health coach and teaching you how you can intertwine that with all of your existing modalities to create one beautiful signature offer using your own unique methodology. And if you're new to Ayurveda, this course is also for you because you will go on the deepest personal development journey of your life so please please reach out if ayurvedic wisdom is calling you namaste